Hello, my name is David with Winning Solutions. We hope this video will be all the help you need. Are you trying to create an access database, but find that it is too much work, or you could be doing something more productive with your time? WSI can do all the hard work for you. Just contact us via the information below this video. We will work with you to determine how much time and money will be needed to build your new database. If you'd prefer to have your database built with .NET, Microsoft SQL Server, so you can run it on your Windows desktop or anywhere in a web browser, we could do that too. So the topic of this tutorial is, my database is slow, what can I do? Now we hear this from clients all the time, and certainly there are a lot of things that can slow a database down. As a database gets very large, it will naturally slow down. If you have a database that takes up 10 terabytes, you know, there's not a whole lot we can do to make it run instantaneously. So size is certainly a factor. And also, before beginning, I would also like to advise that if your database is currently in Microsoft Access as a back end, that can also, Access will run a little bit slower and also has a size limit of two gigabytes. So as you approach that, it certain things will certainly slow down. So those are some of the basics. And if you have an access backend, and if you saw our video on splitting databases, we went over what a front end and a back end is. But if you have access tables, if your entire database is in access, then and you're getting close to that two gigabyte limit, we would strongly recommend migrating over to an SQL server database and Within certain parameters, there are free versions of SQL Server called SQL Server Express, where if the database is small enough, if it's small enough, I think 10 gigabytes is the limit, you can run it for free. And that's a good way to kind of test out whether SQL Server is going to be a better solution for you than Access. In most cases, it will be. But the main point of this presentation is to talk about some other potential solutions uh, so you know, maybe you've, your database has moved over to SQL Server, and you know it's sometimes the programming can be streamlined, but often it's a structural issue in the database that that where addressing that structural issue could help things. Now there's a few things we, we usually look at: archiving, indexing, and query optimization. Indexing is going to be the main point of this video. Now archiving generally not recommended by itself because what archiving does it will reduce the size of the data set so you're taking old data and moving in and removing it and setting it aside uh, but of course now that old data is not going to be as accessible as it was before and it really doesn't do anything about performance it might temporarily cause some increase in performance because the data is smaller. As I said earlier, size is a factor. But ultimately, once your database gets back to the pre-archive size, you're gonna, the problems are going to return. So that's not really an issue. I'm not saying archiving is never an issue. Obviously, if there are, you know, if there are really old records you don't use anymore, that's something to consider. But it's not really a speed solution. So we're going to talk about indexes here. And you know, I'm, my intent here is to make this very high level, very uh, just a very general 50,000 foot uh, view overview, overview. So if you're not technical, uh, don't worry about it. This, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, we're not assuming any technical knowledge here. I'm just going through this on a very, a, a very broad level. First, uh, first thing to, to consider here is something called a primary key. Now, a primary key is a, is either a column or set of columns that uniquely identifies a particular row in a table. Mostly, you'll see this as a column that says ID. It might be in the column might say ID, it might say person ID, it might say asset ID, or whatever. But that's what a primary key is. Now, a clustered index will include a primary key. And what a clustered index basically means, it specifies a particular order of records. I mean, you can think about uh, a dictionary. You know, dictionaries, well, back when people used paper dictionaries, right? We had the uh, the guide words, we had, you know, the words 
on on each page it kind of told you what words you know the words start from from this and go to that and everything every word in between them is on these two pages uh basically clustered indexing of which primary key is a part kind of sets the order of things and this is important for searching because when you're searching for records with uh, you're searching for last names beginning with d well the index is going to tell you where those d records are if that last name is a clustered index so that's what that's one of the things that can speed up the database at least on the searching end because it makes records easier to find rather than having to search the entire table the database can search sections or i don't want to get too tech technical but it can search uh, pages within that file it can ser search uh, sections of the file instead of searching the entire file so that's what a clustered index now uh, each table can only have one clustered index um, because you you can't sort on multiple because I mean, it's going to define order. If if I if I can sort words by uh, both the first letter and the last letter, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Now the non-clustered index, we can put as many of those as we want. Uh, now that's a, also a guide on where to find certain records. The difference is that it's not ordered uh, in any way, but it's still a guide. It, it it still gives guidance on where to find particular records. Now, um, indexing. So you might say, well, I'll just put indexes on all my uh, on all my columns. Indexes are applied to columns; they're, they're applied to fields in, in the in, in a particular table, and they can certainly speed up a database by making data easier to find. However, and, and so basically, you want to use indexing. The, the keywords we're going to use them on columns that are searched frequently. That's that's the that, that's really the the key element here. Uh, but more is not always better. Uh, if you're going, if you have a table where you're writing data very often, you're, where you're doing a lot of inserts, well, I mean, think again. Let's go back to the dictionary example. If you go, if, if I go into a dictionary that has a hundred thousand words, and we suddenly, you know, insert five thousand more, well, it's got to be re-indexed, right? Because the, the words are going to be inserted in the middle. Now that index has got to be rebuilt. And that is a process too. Uh, we can end up with uh, fragmentation, and fragmentation um, uh, basically means you have a lot of pages. You have a lot of uh, pages within the index, and you can think of a page as a page in a dictionary for our purposes. Um, you have you'll, you'll basically have a lot of pages that are half filled with words, and so you, and it's very much like uh, you know fragmenting of a hard drive where you, where you, where you have data that's not contiguous, you have data that's not in order, you have half-filled pages. So if you're constantly adding and deleting, you're going to be constantly rebuilding that index to relieve the fragmentation. And that, and that could actually slow down performance. So we don't recommend just putting in indexes everywhere. It's, it's kind of an art, kind of a science, but there is uh, there are places and uh, there are certain advanced tools. I, I won't go into those now because that's way beyond the scope of this presentation. Uh, but we can use some advanced tools to kind of determine where indexes would be the most useful. There are there are tools within SQL Server that can help determine that. Query optimization is another another thing we can use now. Queries, if you're not familiar, uh, queries. Uh, I mean. You can think of a query as a search, in, in a sense. It's uh, kind of a display of data. Uh, we, we can merge data from several tables. We can use query to display, edit, insert, delete. Uh, it's, it's, you know, in SQL Server, they're called views, more or less. Uh, but it's just, it's, just a, it's just a way of looking at one or more tables. And queries are often used for searching. If you're going to search through a combination of two tables, you want to have those two tables in a query. Now, of course, some are more efficient than others. And now queries can certainly take advantage of indexes for speed, uh, but also there's such thing as query optimization. Um, some queries, some better written queries will search faster than some less written queries. Uh, one example is that uh, whenever you use the word not if you search for something that's not equal to one or not equal to something uh if i search for uh employee ids not equal to 100 it's going to be very slow but if i search for employee ids 
uh, less than 100 or greater than 100, it'll be much faster. It's just, again, there's a lot of internal technical details there. But the bottom line is the way queries are written can have an influence on speed as well. So thanks for watching this video. Again, this was just intended to be a very high level overview. Um, my objective here was not to get technical with, with anything. So the bottom line is indexing is a process that we can do to help your database run faster, that and query optimization. So now you know what to search for. If you, if you know, you think your database is running slowly, that's what, that's probably one of the first things you should look at. Or if you'd rather just turn it over to us, WSI can do these things for you. So please call, email, web chat us from our website, winningsolutionsinc.com, to begin the process of getting a quote. Thank you for watching. We hope this video was all the help you needed for your Access database. If you are struggling to create an Access database that does what you need it to do and just want someone to make that happen for you, that is the business we are in. Our contact information is below the video. You can reach out to us and we will work with you to determine how long it will take and how much it will cost to get your database up and going. If the time and cost are acceptable to you, WSI will get to work and make your database vision a reality. Perhaps Microsoft.net or MS SQL Server would be the better choices for your new database, so it can run on your Windows desktop or anywhere in a web browser. WSI will help you make this determination if you like. Again, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe, and have a great day.